Let's give this image more punch and add a vibrant blue cyan look on top using nothing more than Lightroom. If you want to follow along as always feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. As always we are starting with the basic adjustments so let's expand the basic panel. Right away since I want this image to be very well saturated I'm changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape and you will see how this will nicely bring up the base saturation. Taking a closer look at the exposure through the histogram you can see it's very well exposed. Still I want to change things up a bit. I'm going to start by dropping the highlights. What this will do is it will reveal more of these nice looking clouds in the sky and I want to have them nicely visible just like this. Then I'm going to push the shadows since there are a few of these darker areas that are a little bit too dark for my taste. I'm also going to bring up the blacks for the same effect just so we have a little more details in the very darkest parts of the image like this. Of course applying these things we will lessen the base contrast and make the image look more flat but that is intended since I'm going to use masks later on to target specific areas of the image to bring back contrast. So having a flat base image to start with is exactly what I want. After I have adjusted the brightest parts and the darkest parts what I want to do next is to use the white slider to already bring back a little bit of contrast and that's how we can give this image punch. So as I bring up the whites I'm very closely paying attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping at this point. So this is looking like a great spot. What we can do as well further improving the contrast is simply pulling up the contrast slider. So right around here looks good to me. As we have adjusted the exposure we now have a better idea what the image looks like and at this point this is always when I adjust the white balance. So right now you can see a very heavy blue color cast which I quite like for this image. I do want to have some blue tones in here but it's a bit too much. So I'm going to bring up the temperature to fix that. Let's raise it a little more. I'm kind of looking at the whites in the snow and I want them to look almost neutral. I think right around here we do have a pretty good white balance. We can change things later on with a bit of masking anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. I also want this image to look super sharp and clear. Therefore I'm going to bring up the texture which will kind of sharpen the image. Then I'm going to bring up the clarity which will boost the midtones contrast. And I'm also going to add a little bit of dehaze which will help with the contrast further giving this image more punch. Okay, of course I want to bring up the vibrance plus I also want to bring up the saturation because I really want this image to be colorful. Alright, so basically I started by reducing the overall contrast revealing more details in the highlights and the shadows. Then once I was happy with the visible details I started introducing contrast with the white slider but also clarity and dehaze. Now let's take a look at before real quick. You can see we already have more punch. The colors do look much better thanks to a much more neutral white balance but now we need to target a few areas specifically to really improve this image and as always we're going to do that with masking. So let's open up the masking panel I want to start working on the sky. Therefore, let me use a linear gradient. I'm going to cover pretty much the top half of the sky like this. I don't want to affect the mountain in the foreground, so I'm going to subtract and choose the objects mask. Here, make sure we are using the rectangle select mode, which will just give us better results. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around that mountain. You might be wondering why I'm not using a sky mask. That's because Lightroom does have issues with that mountain and it will always select parts of it. So I'm doing it this way. Now with the mask created I want to make the top part of the sky rather dark and dramatic. So let's bring down the exposure and this will also help reveal more of the cloud structure. I don't want to overdo it so let's just bring it down a little bit. I can also boost the contrast to further bring out details in the clouds. Now these two changes will boost the saturation. You can clearly see that in the top part of the sky. I really don't want it to be that strong. So what I'm doing next is to bring down the saturation just like this 
And finally, let's also add a bit of clarity, further boosting the cloud structure in that area in the top. Wonderful. I want to continue using another linear gradient for the very, very top, just a small one like this. And again, I want to use that to further make the sky darker, bringing down the exposure. And thus we're kind of creating a vignetting effect, guiding the viewer's eye more towards the center where we want the viewer to look at. Then let's also work on the foreground. It's a little bit too bright. So let me target it using another linear gradient like this. Now I don't want to target the whole foreground. I want to leave this patch of seaweed or whatever this is in. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm just going to place it over this patch of seaweed. Let's give it a try like that. And what I'm going to do for the foreground is I'm starting by bringing down the exposure, just a bit like this. Let's bring up the contrast. I also want to increase the temperature very, very slightly, kind of adding a bit of color balance this way with the warmer tones in the foreground against the blue tones in the sky. And let's also add some texture. Let's add clarity just to have more visible details beneath the water surface. And I'm also going to bring up the DAs very gently. Okay, I think that's looking great. Uh, at this point, I do want to further work on the background. Let me try using the sky selection. You will see we do have parts of the mountain selected. There is no way to fix it with the sky mask. But what I want to do is to make the part just above the horizon a little bit brighter. So for that purpose, this mask should be fine. I'm going to subtract the linear gradient, taking out the top part of the sky, which we made darker previously. Now with this area selected, what I'm doing is to bring up the exposure. And I also want to bring up the blacks just introducing a little more brightness behind the mountain in the sky like this. It just makes the whole shot look a bit more interesting. Now let me also work on the reflection of the mountain. I'm going to start with the radial gradient covering the peak like this. Of course I only want to affect the water so let's subtract the linear gradient taking out the radial gradient filter above the water like that. And what I'm going to do in here is to make the reflection pop by adding texture. Let's also add clarity. And I do think I need to bring down the exposure just a little bit, making the reflection darker. Plus, you can see the blue tones are starting to become a little overwhelming. So I'm also going to bring down the saturation in here. I also think the blue tones in the mountain itself are a bit too strong. So I want to change that. Let me try this using a linear gradient, just covering the top like this. Then I'm subtracting a sky mask. Again, as you can see, this is far from perfect, but maybe for this purpose, it's fine. Let's give it a try. I'm going to bring down the saturation a lot. So the snow on the mountain is actually white and not blueish. What I want to do as well is to slightly bring up the highlights making the mountain just a bit brighter and I'm also going to bring up the whites. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Now let me turn off all the masks so we can see what the image looked like before with the basic adjustments to after. And again, as always, with those masks, it's a huge transformation and it will make the image look so much better. Okay, now we're actually almost done. What I want to do next is a little bit of color grading, but there is not much going on. I'm going to start in the color mixer and I want to slightly bring down the blue saturation. I'm doing this because I'm going to increase the blue saturation at another point, not in the color mixer, but down here in the, in the calibration tab. As always, that's something I do for most of my images. I'm going to start by bringing down the blue primary hue. I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I love how this will change the blue tones of this image. You can see we now have this very rich cyan color tone in the sky. I want to further improve this by bringing up the saturation like this. All right. Now, besides adjusting the blue primary hue and saturation, I always just play around with these sliders until I get something that looks good to me. What this means in this case, I will also bring down the red primary hue 
which will just make the colors look a bit better in my opinion. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation in here. And that's basically all there is to it when it comes to the color grading for this image. Now we also of course want to sharpen it, so let's go open up the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, and we're going to hold down the alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So you can see we can nicely target the main parts of the image and let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Of course there are a few sensor spots throughout the image so let's clean them up using the remove tool and I'm choosing the heal mode. Let's click on visualize spots so these sensor spots are easier to find and then I'm just starting to brush over all these dots. All right, the sky is looking fine for now, but there are things in the foreground which I want to remove as well. So I'm just going to use the heel brush and try to get rid of some of these things in the water. This would be much faster in Photoshop, but I just want to demonstrate that this is possible in Lightroom as well, although it's so much slower. Okay, and there we have it. That's the finished image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments. Let me know what you think about this style. And if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as well. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you all next time.